Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Spartan. And I'm Pudgy. And today we are going to be reacting to Alt Shift X's video, The Strangest Places in Game of Thrones. So this is another bonus video voted by our demigods over on our Patreon where we do once a month a reaction to some sort of side content. Some of these occasionally make it to YouTube, so if this by some chance makes it to YouTube, it means it was one of the best, but the majority of them we leave as a Patreon exclusive. This one has been requested and voted for uh, a fair bit. It's been appearing up and down. It is a bit longer than our demigod time limit, but given Game of Thrones has been a big part of the channel and this one sort of interested us both, I think we've made a bit of an exception and yeah. gone a little bit over with this one. And especially because of how much it has been suggested, we thought... Why not give you guys a bit of a treat? Yeah, and we have also, you know, come to appreciate Alt Shift X's videos. We haven't yeah. delved too much into them because we are saving some in case you guys want them for reactions, and then eventually we'll we'll storm that channel as well. But we have heard a lot of praise. He is considered the gold standard for Game of Thrones videos, theories, knowledge, explanations, etc. So And they're always very interesting, aren't they? Yeah. And I think this will be a treat. So I'm looking forward to it. It does have in the video title East, so maybe it's more focused towards ESOS. I don't know, but it would make sense that ESOS has more weird, like... Yeah, true. Because remember in, in the other um, video, which was the world map, it explained just how little of ESOS we really know. Yeah. It's a, it's a much more... And we got small glimpses, but it really wasn't in detail, and it we were already intrigued yeah. by that. Yeah, man. If, if it didn't take the author of these books, you know, a decade or two per book... We could easily do a whole other series in, in the East or just expand this world, you know. Oh, if only we could write quicker. If only. <laughs> Let us know in the comments down below which one of these strangest places you thought was the strangest. <laughs> if this was your first time watching, let us know what you thought of the video itself. If you do want to participate in voting and suggesting for site content reactions that we do once a month, check out our Patreon, especially in our Demigod tier where all that happens. All right, let's go. Let's go, guys. Most of Game of Thrones happens in Westeros, home to the Starks and Lannisters, the Wall and the Iron Throne. But Daenerys' oh, story it. starts in the eastern continent of Essos, with the Dothraki Sea and Slaver's Bay. We also see Bravos, Pentos, Volantis, Valyria in the show, and Karth. But the True, world we actually of Game do of see a lot of places. Far bigger than we see yeah. in the series. The World Book describes far distant cities and kingdoms, with their own cultures, histories, and mysteries. Some of the strangest places are in the far east of Essos, and in the southern continent of Sothorios. Sothorios oh, is full of jungle, of ruined that. cities, and mystery. No one knows how big it is. A dragon rider once spent three years flying over the continent, but she never found its southern border. Wow. So it's a land Jeez. without end. Colonies Damn. of three years have what? all failed, and treasure hunters don't return, because the jungles are full of disease. Blood boils, sweet rot, worm bone, red death. Archmaster Ugh, Ebro yeah. says that disease kills half of all Westerosi visitors, and those who survive the sickness are often killed by the wildlife. There are huge crocodiles, carnivorous fish, snakes, and basilisks, and apes so huge they can kill elephants with one punch. The oh my god, I don't want to be visiting the there. Eyed lemur called the little it's hard to believe this is in Game of Thrones. Further south in the Green Hell regions are said to be vampire bats that can drain a man of blood, and tattooed lizards with claws on their legs like some kind of dinosaurs. Most terrible oh of god. all are the wyverns, which are similar to dragons. They don't breathe fire, but they're angrier to make up for it. Some kinds oh, hunt in I wonder how they compare in size. Or use stealthy black scales to sneak crit their prey. And if somehow you survive the wildlife and the disease, there are slavers prowling the coast. And there are the native Sothori called Brindled Men. God They're damn, will White Walkers even a threat? I know, far out. With noses like snouts and thick skin like a hog colored white and brown. Brindled Men can't reproduce with other humans. The brindled men near the coast have learned to speak the local trade talk, but the men further south are said to be savage cannibals who worship dark gods. It's oh said my that god, they they're very far away from all those politics and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> who were destroyed or devoured by the brindled men. But the greatest mystery of Sothorios is Yeen. 
Yen is a ruined city, older than time, and built from massive blocks of oily black stone. No trees or vines will touch it. It's a city so evil that not even the jungle will enter. When Chuck Princess Nymeria tried to settle some Roina in Yen, the entire population vanished overnight. So that's what the hell? Off its western coast are the Basilisk Isles. Oh, that's only Sothorios. The God damn. of the summer sea. Hot and humid, the isles swarm with stinging flies, sand fleas, and blood worms. Old Valyria used an isle as a penal colony for their worst criminals. In yeah, I feel like I Gagosos, remember something like Valyrian that in the other video. Valyrian devised new torments and practiced blood sorcery, mating beasts to slave women to birth twisted half-human children. Oh. It's actually crazy how often half-human children are mentioned in the books. It's possible that ancient interspecies breeding is what gives the Targaryens okay, their yeah, dragon that's a, that's magic a good theory. and the Starks their oh, war That makes powers. sense. That's pretty it's cool, though. It's also possible that some of the twisted well, monsters very weird on Sothorios might have been created by Valyrian blood magic. There's oh. some weird shit in the books. Anyway, <laughs> after the yeah, no the Gossos grew rich and powerful on slavery and sorcery, until it was wiped out in a plague. Eventually, people returned, and the Isles are now home to pirates in towns with names like Sty, Whore's Gash, and Black Pudding. They have some charming Was local Davos considered a like pirate? The skulls Smuggler. Of Smuggler. The yeah. island as an offering to some dark god. Occasionally, the free cities come to wipe out the pirates, but the pirates always come back. One time, a captain called Sothos San was sent to destroy the pirates, and he instead became a pirate king who ruled for 30 years. And that guy, mm, Sothos San, is an ancestor of Davos's friend, Saladosan. Ah, uh, yeah, also, I was gonna ask. Also, in Book 5, Barrison Selmy trains a boy from the Basilisk Isles, called Tom Ko Lo. And Barrison says he's the best natural swordsman he's seen since Jamie Lannister. Which is high Ooh. praise. It's high praise. That's One of the Basilisk Isles features an ancient idol of a gigantic toad of malignant aspect. The statue is forty feet high and carved of greasy black stone. The people yeah, this of greasy toad black Isle stone keeps popping up, doesn't it? Like aspect to their faces, and many have webbed hands and feet. So, like Ugh. Yen, this is a reference to that, H.P. That is Lovecraft, so weird to think about. about strange fishy people worshipping strange fishy gods. These <laughs> black stone structures are scattered all over the World of Thrones, and it's hinted that they were built by a Lovecraftian fish people called the Deep Ones, whose descendants apparently still live on Toad Isle. So, in conclusion, the World Book says, the Basilisk Isles are best avoided. Thousands of years ago, in the grasslands of Essos, the first civilizations began. Legend says that a silver sea was ruled by fisher queens from a floating palace. There were savage, hairy men who rode to battle on unicorns, and a city of Liber, <laughs> where acolytes of a spider goddess warred against those of a serpent god. I reckon so many of these are exaggerated the centaurs, experiences of things. They sound too worlds. far fetched. These are all just. Well, that is the legends, world of Game of Thrones. But we do know there was a Danny literally stood in Sun. fire. The yeah, to a degree. Called themselves tall. Also, now things get exaggerated over the generations. Sorcerers and scholars. They built cities across the grasslands with canals, caravans, and libraries, worshipping a hundred gods. Sarnori soldiers wore steel and spider silk and rode scythed chariots with spider women and men silk. fighting together. Sarnor warred against the Carthi and the Dothraki, and even fought in Valyria's wars against Geese. The Sarnori were divided into lots of rival kingdoms, but traditionally they were ruled by a high king in a wondrous palace with a thousand rooms. Legend says that the first high king was called Huzor Amai, which sounds like Azor Ahai, the hero who ended the Long Night. Many of the cultures of Essos have their own versions oh, of this story. Oh, as, as they were calling like him, Noah's Ark right. and they'd refer to him as a Zohar Hai, but it wasn't, it was of the same Arya. Sarnor dominated the West Grasslands for thousands of years, but after the Doom of Valyria, the Dothraki united and attacked Sarnor in force. City after city fell, and Sarnor was too slow and divided to fight the threat. They were broken in a final battle called the Field of Crows. And yeah, we heard about that. Ruins. Fewer than 20,000 tall men remain.
North of Essos is a vast ocean called the Shivering Sea. It's full of fish, crabs, seals, whales, and leviathans the size of islands. Sailors also oh, describe shit. mermaids and drowned spirits and mists that can instantly freeze a whole ship. Would there are many cool reports of mermaids. ice dragons, colossal as much bigger. That was like the thing out from God of War, the sea serpent. They're made of living ice and breathe cold instead of flame. Which might explain oh, that would be cool to see. Mists. That would when be mad. When ice dragons die, they melt, so no one can prove that they exist. Mm-hmm. And In then the he's just flying on an ice dragon. Waste where the blizzards never end. Sailors describe strange lights in the sky, which might be Aurora Borealis. There are also tales of Cannibal Bay, where ships Ugh. enter, then are trapped when the sea freezes behind them. It's said that a thousand ships lie entombed in Cannibal Bay, still inhabited by the children and grandchildren of their original crews, who survive by feasting on the flesh of sailors. Oh my god, port. that is disgusting. Much of the Shivering Sea is ruled god by the damn. people of the island. So what we saw was like tamed. The Ibanese are Ramsey short, strong, and hairy, Seems so. with ridged brows and massive jaws. Yeah, Ramsey's like Charles Ibanese Blake with his sometimes role. reproduce with other humans, but the offspring are sterile. So like the brindled men, the Ibanese might be another species of human. Kind of like how Neanderthals lived alongside Homo sapiens in the real world for a while. The Ibanese are cunning craftsmen, hunters, and warriors who fish the Shivering Sea. Their whaling ships are renowned for their strength in weathering storms, and taking whales for bone, blubber, and oil. The island of Ib has dark forests and mountains that looks full of beautiful. bears, wolves, and mammoths. Many Ibanese live alone in these woods as foresters or miners, but others live in the main port of Ibn, in the shadow of the God King's Castle, a colossal ruin that once housed a hundred Ibanese kings. Under the God King's, kings? Ib conquered the God forest. Goddamn, a lot the of kings. Where's the only body? So she ain't having that, though. She must be the only the one. Or the Quevron, or the Woodswalkers. The Woodswalkers are thought to be related to the children of the forest of Westeros, the that would be really cool. Carved trees like how the children carve weirwoods. Oh, true. But the woodswalkers also built a settlement or city, which is cool because we've never seen a city built by the children in Westeros. Mm. The god kings are gone now, and Ibs ruled by a council of nobles. But the woodswalkers are said to still live in the deeper woods and will bless a household that leaves offerings of leaf and stone. East of Ibs, that's pretty cool. That'd be mad really to see that. Distant lands. Author George Martin warns us that we're seeing this world from the perspective of Westerosi maesters, whose information on distant places might not mm, be accurate. Distortions true. and errors creep in. Here might be dragons type stuff. So everything from here on in might be... I mean, we even saw that in the show. East of Ib are the Thousand Islands, a scatter of bleak windswept rocks. They're inhabited by a strange, hairless people with green skin and teeth filed to sharp points. Ugh. They're said to it's sacrifice vampires. sailors to fish-headed <laughs> gods, but they're so afraid of the sea that they won't touch the water, even under threat of death. Some say that the wow. Thousand Islands are the last remnants of a drowned kingdom whose towns and towers were submerged thousands of years ago. <laughs> so again, this stuff is... Have they got like a justification for all the... Craft. South of the Thousand Islands is the port city of Nefer, surrounded by cliffs and shrouded in fog. Nefer looks like a small town, but most of the city is hidden underground, so Nefer is called the Secret City, known for necromancy and torture. East of Nefer are the grim grey forests of Mosavi, a dark land of shape changers and demon hunters. These mysterious lands are as far east as any Westerosi. Essos is divided by a great mountain range called the Bones, named for the remains of those who try to cross them. The mountains are riddled with rivers, canyons, vast underground caverns, and sunless seas. There are passages into the mountains, ancient carved steps and hidden passages, but only a few roads lead out of the Bones, the Steel Road, the Stone Road, and the Sand Road. Each I love those names. Each of by a fortress city, Kayanaya, Samiriana, and Bayasabad. How do they got so much names? The, the, the law is crazy. Yeah. Floor. The lakes yeah. and rivers of Hakun dried up, reducing the kingdom to ruin. Now, only these three cities and This is all the world that George just made, made up. Women who believe it's crazy. Only those who give birth are permitted to take life. 
the women wear oh. iron rings in their nipples. Oh, so okay, interesting. Those who give life can take life. Trained in combat. I mean, it's an interesting philosophy. Most men in these cities are gelded and live as eunuchs. Only the strongest and handsomest men are allowed to breed and to rule the cities, making the bones a confusing mix of matriarchy and patriarchy. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. The bones are the plains of the Jogos Nai. These guys are a bit like Dothraki, nomadic mounted warriors roaming across With the pointy heads. Yeah, what the but the Jogos Nai don't ride horses, they ride zorses, which in the real world Zorses. are hybrids of zebras and horses. The Zorses of Game of Thrones are similar, but tend to be tough and angry. There's a book character called Vargo Hoat who rides a Zorse in Westeros. He leads the Brave Companions who cut off Jaime Lannister's hand in Book 3. Uh, but the Jogos and I are short poor, and poor squat, Jamie. with pointed skulls because they bind their heads when young, which is actually a thing in the real world. Groups oh of Jogos are ruled by a war chief and a moon singer. Imagine chucking a Usually hat on the that. Chiefs are men and the moon singers women, but sometimes they switch roles and live as the other gender. Because of their religion, the Jogos Nai don't kill other Jogos Nai, but they constantly wage war on the peoples around them, including the <laughs> cities of the bones. <laughs> They're gonna let their the anger out Nye somehow. Wiped out the last of the stone giants, which were twice as large as the giants of Westeros. Which oh, is shit. 24 feet or 7 meters tall. Holy the shit. The Jogos Nai also fight God Nitu, damn. an empire to the south. Sick of being. I thought raided, Rumorin the was massive. They tried to wipe out the Jogos Nai, and one time they got close under Emperor Lobu. But a Jogos warrior woman called Zia rose up and destroyed Lobu's armies, claiming the Emperor's skull as her drinking cup. Yi oh, Ti is the oldest and greatest that is next of the level. Of the inspired by Imperial China, a land of hills and plains, jungles and rainforests, it's said to be so wealthy that its princes live in houses of solid gold. Its forests are dense and said to be infested with basilisks, but a web of stone roads provides safe passage. The cities of Yi Ti are more magnificent than anywhere in Westeros. The current emperor lives in a palace that's larger than the entire city of King's Landing. Oh, so Yi wow. is crazy powerful, and legend says that it was once even greater. The Great Empire of the Dawn covered most of Far East Essos, with riches and armies even greater than the Valyrian Empire. The first emperor of Yi Ti was believed to be a god on earth, son of the Lion of Night and the Maiden Made of Light. It's said that this first god emperor ruled for 10,000 years of peace, until he ascended to 10, the stars. 10,000? Yi was then ruled by the Pearl Emperor, then the Jade, Tourmaline, Onyx, Topaz, and Opal Emperors. Each reign... The fact that they've even named these guys, guys. like... <laughs> the I know. The Amethyst Empress was killed have a lot of detail. by her brother, the Bloodstone Emperor. He began a reign of terror, practicing necromancy, slavery, cannibalism, and torture. He took oh a tiger God. woman All for his bride into one. and worshipped a black stone that had fallen from the sky, which might connect to the black stone of Yin and Toad Isle. It's said that the Bloodstone Emperor caused the Long Night when the world went dark and demons attacked. Yi Tish believed that the Long Night was ended Isn't that by the hero to what happened? High. So this seems to be the same story as the Long Night in Westeros, when the White Walkers first attacked and were defeated by the last hero. Yi Ti right, even has a structure okay. like the wall, the huge which John Snow got robbed of big <laughs> time from the demons of a freezing desert. So, are the White Walkers of Westeros the same as the demons of Yi Ti? Also, the story of the Bloodstone Emperor is really similar to the Westerosi story of the Knights King. They both marry a monstrous woman, make themselves rulers, and worship dark forces. They Interesting. They seem to be like okay. different cultures' myths of the same events. So what really oh, to remember happened? the Knights King what different to the Night King. And what ended it? These questions are central to the final season of Game of Thrones and the war to prevent a second long night from the White Walkers. Another mystery is that the five forts are made of fused black stone. Different Again, to the Lacrosian oily black stone, fused oh. stone was made by Valyrians with dragon flame. But the five forts predate Valyria. So maybe the Great Empire mm. of the Dawn had dragons of their own. And another place with ancient fused stone is the High Tower in Westeros. 
Did ancient Yeetish dragon riders build the pyramid, I mean the high tower? We'll go down that rabbit hole in another video, but check out Lucifer Means Lightbringer on YouTube, who goes real deep on this stuff. South of Yi Ti is Damn, the there's just so much to explore, its isn't there? jungles are full of tigers and apes, and it's rich in spices and gemstones. The people of Leng are some of the tallest in the world, many reaching seven feet tall, and they oh, have damn. better eyesight than other humans. For you most of its out. history, oh, no. Leng was an isle of mystery, closed off to the outside world. The Empress of Leng was known to have congress with the Old Ones, gods who lived in ruined cities deep beneath Leng's jungle. All their gods are like animal heads. Sometimes pets. the Old Ones told the Empress to execute all the strangers on the island. That stopped when Yi Ti invaded Leng and became the dominant people. The ruined cities of the Old Ones were sealed off, but legends persist that the Old Ones still live in the darkness below. So, these old ones are another clear reference to Lovecraft. In fact, Leng is the name of a mysterious interdimensional plateau in the Lovecraft mythos. Further to the east, there's also the city of Carcosa, ruled by a yellow emperor, and Kedath, yeah. where unspeakable rites are performed for mad gods. Author George Martin has said that he added these Lovecraft references basically just to fill out the map along with places like the City of the Winged Men, Cities of the Bloodless Men, and Bone Town. So these places are Although just Although like, just fills it out, there's so much detail that in that, important to the story. alone. But there yeah, is lots of room to be able to expand on seems central to the world of ice and fire. Ashai is easternmost and southernmost. The we heard a lot about Ashai, especially from Jorah. It's a huge city. I think so, anyways. Landing, Old Did Town, we? Yeah, I think he Park used to call combined. it Ashai. And Ashai is built entirely of Lovecraftian greasy black stone, making Ashai dark and gloomy, even in the summer. Though the city is huge, the population is small. There are no crowds or noisy markets. People walk masked and veiled and alone. There are no children in Ashai, and no animals. Apparently they can't survive the foul pollution of the river Ash. The wider areas called the Shadowlands, where glowing ghost grass grows and dragons stir. Ashai yeah, is the center yeah. of dark magic, where red priests, blood mages, necromancers, and night walkers practice. Ah, oh, this is their spells. domain. Right, Apparently, right. magic is stronger in Ashai, and seekers come from all over the world to learn secrets and magic. Melisandre, Quaith, mm. Marwan, and Miri Mazdur. Oh, good old Quaith. I never got the his shit from her. I know. Oh, that meant it's nothing. Come, and seen wonders and terrors beyond imagining. The masked shadowbinders like Melisandre and Quaith are said to be the most sinister of all the sorcerers of Ashai. They are oh, really? there to go up the ash, deep into the Shadowlands, where there's demons and dragons and worse. In the heart of darkness lies Stigai, the city of the night, where even shadow. Stigai looks pretty cool. Tread. So this place seems scary like at the same time, a cosmic go. center of dark magic. The Heart of Darkness is like an opposite pole to the Heart of Winter in the north mm. of Westeros. But who built Ashai, and why build a giant city out of oily black stone? One theory is that the Bloodstone Emperor built it, because he worshipped black stone, after all. Or maybe Ashai sure enough, used theory. to be normal stone, but some magical cataclysm like the Long Night transformed it. The polluted Shadowlands are the long nights fall out of so many things. Oh no. The Doom of Valyria. Or maybe Ashai was built by the Lovecraftian Deep One. But I do love how something like that impacts the whole world. And, Yin and the Toadstone. All these evil places seem interconnected. The darkness of Ashai runs deep. So, the world of Game of Thrones is far bigger than Westeros. It's full yeah, of exotic no creatures, yeah. ancient people, uncomfortable race undertones, Lovecraftian horrors, and cosmic mysteries. And these and that's like scratching the surface. Fire are playing out in the final season of Game of Thrones. Much of the artwork in this video is from Unseen Westeros, an exhibition of work by 40 Game of Thrones artists. You can see the oh. exhibition for free in Berlin Damn. in January. Or you can get a beautiful art book on their oh, Kickstarter. We're way past that, it's aren't we? It's got 80 pieces depicting Westeros and beyond, many never before seen. This is all non-profit, this isn't sponsored, just a celebration of the world of thrones and the artists who bring it to life. 
the Kickstarter is the only way to get the book. And it closes literally like today. So get it while you can. Oh, the so it's been closed for about is by four Claridos years. Yeah. And other artworks <laughs> Check by it out anyway. Kirchy, Mandy Fink, San Rixian, Kevin Catalan, Oriana Weisner, Matt Olson, and more. Links are below. Most of the info from this video is from the World of Ice and Fire, which you can pick up on Amazon. Which we will eventually be reading. Objects, yes. No extra cost to you. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and thanks to the patrons. Thank you. Curtis Trotter, Simon Kern, VJ Ganesh, and LVE. Cheers. Cheers. Guys, make sure you do check out Alt Shift X's channel. If you haven't already, most of you probably have already seen it, but it's got Game of Thrones everything, this incredible video. Go give the original video some love as well. Like, subscribe, comment on that as well. We'll if you have link. We'll have a link in our description. So yeah, just give the video some love. Um, he's doing some amazing work. As for this, I mean, I'm going to be honest, there was a lot of information. Yeah. And that, some of it definitely went way over my head. Probably yeah. need to watch it a couple of times. Um, I was probably quieter than usual during that reaction because I was, there weren't many gaps and I was just trying to like take it all in and absorb it and uh, relate it to the world of Game of Thrones. Yeah. So I don't think people will mind. I think usually you guys don't mind when we're a bit more connected Quiet, to these yeah. ones. <laughs> but, but it was interesting. Like, I think the whole point of it was just to illustrate how vast the world is. It is crazy. And the big bads of Westeros were definitely yeah. just like little ants compared to the rest of the world. Like, Even Westeros' whole squabble just seems like just futile, a, yeah. a, a, a tiny part of, of what the world's really got to offer. Yeah. 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 I mean, these massive like apes that can stomp on a gr on an elephant, like what the hell is that? They, they have to be massive. Yeah. No, there, there were so many layers. I mean, I'm going to be honest, some of it to me feels somewhat far-fetched. Some of it I yeah. feel like it's more that they've gotten more extreme while passed down well, over he the did, generations. He did say that the Maces are Westeros. Yeah. 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 And others I feel like are just probably the fans reading into it a bit more and just trying to extrapolate as much as you can. And that's part of the fun of all this. But definitely it expands on the world a lot and it does show us that there's probably a lot of no doubt crazy shit no doubt a lot of it probably has merit i mean heck we've seen white walks dragon so i'm not saying that i don't i know that the world's probably got a lot of crazy stuff to it why do you think fans like i, I would have thought that because a lot of he, he mentioned a lot of times a lot of them were fan theories about things oh yeah like at the yeah. end of a lot of stuff he'd be like some theories are you know yeah, so yeah yeah it's things that isn't confirmed but fans are drawing and connecting the dots and trying to put it together. And they're probably stuff we'll never get answers on because they're just way yeah. left field kind of stuff. It's not related to the center story, yeah. but it's nice to theorize and explore. Yeah. And George is way behind at this point. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man, man, I haven't finished the series, let alone bloody How explore. sad is that? I hope he does. Hope he does. Because <laughs> if I start reading those books and it doesn't get finished, we're going to have problems. <laughs> Maybe we can put in a special request from Spartan and Pudgy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that'll go a long way. <laughs> but no, it was it was interesting to see how, particularly, you know, obviously we're connected to the story of, of Westeros and how the Long Night yeah. relates to so many different cultures. And it does leave more to be desired, I guess, with the end of Game of Thrones. You know, you do, do feel like uh, there should have been a deeper story. That's why I always thought that between the Three-Eyed Raven, the White Walkers, the Children of the Forest... There should have been more connection. Yeah, even that's why I always felt like Bran should have walked into the Night King, and there should have mm -hmm. been some sort of flashback, missing pieces yeah. in the story of like you know lost history of time or something that wrapped it all up that made you go, "Holy shit!" Yeah. Like that's like, what this was happening. This is what it was all for. Yeah, something. You know, that's what Not was missing. Not just like a. To me, felt like a very plain revenge story in a way. Yeah, yeah, like beat the undead. It, whereas when you hear all this stuff, you can tell that the writing, the purpose behind it was there was so much more, you know. Many cultures have explored it in different ways and a lot of their own mythological or just supernatural elements yeah. still seem to link or originate from the White Walkers and, and relate to them. So that was interesting. Did you have a favourite place that was kind of new to you? I don't know. They were all crazy. I don't know. I, to be honest, I have to watch it again to really absorb it. I can't say for sure. Did you? Um, not really. I, uh, I don't think I'd be visiting any of them. To be fair, like they all sound yeah, no shit. <laughs> yeah, crazy. But uh, 
There were some cool ones. Like, I, I feel like I'd want to visit the Giants. That's I feel like that would be pretty cool. So you want to visit the opposite place to you? Yeah. The shortest girl was the <laughs> Giants. Interesting, like, different animals and things like that. But, yeah, like, because I thought Woo Moon was massive. And then to know that there's... Bigger like, giants, Bigger yeah. giants. And if they're anything like Woo Moon, I would love to meet one, you know? Like, he was so... I just felt like he was so kind-hearted and mis misinterpreted and misunderstood. Yeah. So... 100%. Tormund would love to meet some of those bigger giants too, Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. Especially those female ones that let him in their tummy and yeah. whatever. <laughs> I think one of the coolest things for me was probably, the, I don't know, for some reason, the ice dragon. Oh, yeah. Maybe because it connected me to the sea serpent in um, God of War as well. But mm -hmm. it just that had that picture that I saw especially had presents. That was, was like, pretty cool. Seemed like a, yeah, I don't know. It seemed like something that could be really cool to have experienced in, in a show or a book. I oh, know. Yeah, that actually would have been really cool. Even just like hearing about mermaids and things like that the only reason why i'm intrigued is because game of thrones is not really conventional so it would have been cool to see their take on yeah. you know fantasy element. yeah mythical creatures that you know were portrayed in like one way you know long beautiful hair and whatever but i think they would have gone completely left field well guys we hope you enjoyed our reaction to this video remember to give the original video some love and give our video some love too let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. We'll be reading those comments. Let us know if it's your first time watching it. And again, if you do want to participate in suggesting and recommending videos for us to react to that relate to the shows that we're watching, then check out our Patreon and in particular the Demigods here where we have these votes and yeah. discussions. Take care of yourselves, guys, and we'll see you on one of our next reactions. See you guys.